Rebecca Skloot is the author of the number one New York Times bestseller, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, a story of a young black woman who died of cervical cancer in 1951 and left behind an inexplicably immortal line of cells known as HeLa. Henrietta's cells were harvested without her knowledge and consent and contributed to scientific advancements as varied as the polio vaccine, treatments for cancers and viruses, and in vitro fertilization. Named the best book of 2010 and one of the 100 books to read in a lifetime by Amazon.com, the book was made into an Emmy-nominated HBO film starring Oprah Winfrey. Recognizable for its engaging, straightforward language, Rebecca's writing has charmed people around the world and has been featured in the New York Times Magazine, Popular Science, the Chicago Tribune, and many other publications. Rebecca received a Bachelor of Science in Biological Sciences from Colorado State University and completed her Master of Fine Arts in Creative Nonfiction here at the University of Pittsburgh. She has taught creative writing and science journalism at the University of California, Berkeley, New York University, University of Memphis, and the University of Pittsburgh. Rebecca is also the founder and president of the Henrietta Lacks Foundation, which strives to provide financial assistance to needy individuals who have made important contributions to scientific research without their knowledge or consent. Thank you, Rebecca, for your amazing contributions. The University of Pittsburgh is proud to have you as one of our graduates. I am so honored to be here today. Um, I'm incredibly excited about being a recipient of an honorary degree from a school that means so very much to me. And I'm really happy to you know, be here with you all today, even though I wish I could be there in person. Um, I wish I could be in Pittsburgh. I wish I could go afterwards for dinner at Tesaro's to celebrate and go for a walk in Frick Park tomorrow and all sorts of other wonderful things that I miss about Pittsburgh. But unfortunately, here we are and I'm on Zoom and um, I know that this is not what everyone had expected their graduation to look like, um, but I really hope that you can all just make the best of this and go out and do all sorts of amazing, wonderful things in the world that will hopefully help us get to a better place, um, which I am absolutely sure you can do. And I wanted to take my time today to just tell you a story because that's what I do, I'm a storyteller. Um, when I was where you are right now, graduating, um, I had no idea what I was gonna do. And I think it's really important for you all to hear that it is absolutely okay to not have everything figured out right now. In fact, it's, it's I actually think it's kind of good. Um, if you have ideas for what you think you wanna do, if you're going to graduate school, or if you're going into the job market, that's amazing and wonderful and you should pursue those goals. But if you don't have any idea <laughs> where you're headed, um, don't feel like that means that you're lost. Um, you know, when I was in this moment, I had learned about this woman, Henrietta Lacks, in a basic biology class. My teacher, like so many biology teachers before him, had told us about HeLa cells, the first immortal human cells ever grown in culture. And he told us about how they had done all these amazing things for science. They helped create the polio vaccine to get the world out of a pandemic exactly. It sort of felt a lot like where we are right now. People were quarantined. And this one woman's cells helped end all that. Um, they were used to, they went up in the space for space missions to see what would happen to human cells in zero gravity. They were used to help develop in vitro fertilization, which is probably uh, a technology that helped a lot of you be present today um, by being born. Um, and so we learned about all these amazing th things his cells had done. And then he said they were from a black woman named Henry Lax. And he wrote her name on the board and that was it. And class was over. And I went up to him after class and I was like, well, what else do we know about her? And did she have any kids? And what do they think about these cells? And he just said, sorry, nobody knows anything. And he was like, see if you can go find something, you know, write up a little thing. I'll give you some extra credit. And I did. I went home and I looked some stuff up and I couldn't find her anywhere. And that was sort of it. But this, I, this idea just stuck in my head. I was so obsessed with this question of who this woman was and why we didn't know anything about her. 
And, you know, I thought I was going to be a veterinarian. I was absolutely dead set on becoming a veterinarian. Um, I would have told you that from the time I was four years old. And then I took my first writing class. I was a junior in undergrad, so pretty late in the game. And the first assignment we got was write a story about something someone forgot. And I wrote this story about this woman, Henrietta, and how everyone had sort of forgotten about her, but I couldn't. I was really obsessed with her. And what I couldn't have known then, or as I took writing classes um, just as electives because I enjoyed writing, um, I had no idea I would become a writer or that I would spend you know, decades of my life trying to figure out who this woman was, writing a book about her, going and traveling the world, talking about bioethics and informed consent and all of these things that I didn't even know were important at the time. Um, but what happened was that I just, I was curious and I sort of followed that curiosity. And I think, you know, this is one of the lessons that I hope you all have taken from your schooling is that curiosity is so important and that it's essential to let yourself be curious and to really listen to yourself when you have moments of curiosity. So I, I always talk about recognizing what moments, these are the moments that just make you stop and go, wait, what? And they can happen, they happen all the time. You know, for me, it was, wait, what do you mean this woman's cells have been alive since 1950s and, and no one knows about who she is? And, and she, she died then, but her cells are still alive. What? Um, and I just kept asking that question, wait, what do you mean? And following that, um, some of the most important stories, uh, some of those widely read stories that I have done in my career have started in those moments. Um, one of my favorite ones, uh, examples of this is I wrote a story about goldfish surgery. It's like there's this whole field of veterinary medicine devoted to people do MRIs and CAT scans and you know anything you can do on a human being, you can do on a goldfish. And people pay a lot of money to do this. And I wrote a whole story about this. It all started, I was at the veterinarian with my dog. I was sitting in the waiting room and and this the vet came out from behind the, the, the sort of, you know, from the back room and there was a receptionist at the counter and the vet came out and he took off his gloves and the receptionist said, how'd it go? He said, great, patient's up, swimming around. And I just went, wait, what? Your patient's swimming? What was your patient? It was a goldfish. Like, what did you do to, your, to the goldfish? Well, he had a tumor removed. And I was like, well, who pays for that? And how do you anesthetize a goldfish? And it just like on and on, I was writing notes on my receipt for, the, for my vet visit. And, you know, these moments happen constantly around us, things that make us kind of stop, but we tend to be busy or we're sort of, we just aren't paying attention. And so we don't actually stop to recognize those moments. Um, and so that's what I want to encourage you to do because you never know where they're going to lead. These moments that make you curious and they're essential for all fields, not just writing. You know, science is all about recognizing these moments that make you go, wait, what was that little piece of data? And where, did, where is that going? And you just sort of follow the information where it's leading you. You know, lawyers looking through old case histories, finding little, little bits of information that can help them with their current case. Wait, what is this case that is actually relevant to the one that I'm doing? Um, you know, one of my favorite examples is Billie Jean King, who changed everything for women in sports um, by fighting for women to get equal pay as, as men, um, as professional athletes. And it all started for her when someone told her when she was young that, you know, when she said she wanted to be a professional athlete, she was told, oh no, women, women can't do that. She was like, wait, what do you mean? And that changed everything for everyone um, ahead of her. So I just want to leave you with that message. If you don't know where you're going, that's okay. Just follow your curiosity and let it sort of lead you down paths that can take you places that right that you can't imagine right now that you would end up in. And if you do think you know exactly what you want to do, is keep following your curiosity because there's a pretty good chance it might lead you somewhere that you don't imagine today as you're sitting there. Um, so I wish you all the best in all of the fields that you're pursuing. And I Wish I could be there to hear you all roar when we all do this. 